Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta and our part two on our very controversial and quite interesting discussion on the concept of organic portals. If you missed part one, I will be placing that down in the description box below. Before we get into the conversation, I first and foremost, as always, would really, really like to thank my patrons and my producers here on Esoteric Atlanta. Without you guys, this channel would not exist. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. You absolutely are the superstars of this channel. And you absolutely are the reason why this channel has made it all these years. I thank you so, so, so much. If you would like to join our Patreon, our producer community, there is a link down in the description box below. And as always, before we get into the subject at hand, a very special word from our sponsors. Okay, everybody, now we have our quote unquote mystery guest, Mr. Fox, who is here to talk more about this crazy idea of organic portals. And I know that Mr. Fox is going to be looking at the Cassiopeian board. So first of all, Mr. Fox, thank you so much for doing that and being here. I'm glad we are pre-recording in case I say your real name, <laughs> but um First and foremost, can we start with the beginning? Like, can you give the audience just like a Cliff Notes version of who the Cassiopeians are and how you found them, how you discovered them? Yeah. Um, yeah, I was trying to think when I came across the Cassiopeian material. And I remembered that some years ago, this could have been 15 years ago, that I saw a short interview series with Carrie Cassidy and the original channeler of the Cassiopeian material, which is Laura Knight. And, um, and I looked up Laura Knight and her books um, online once I saw that interview and found her series called the Wave Series. And, you know, it sort of documents her life and how she eventually ended up you know, going through some major struggles, which led her into eventually this channeling work that she's been doing for, you know, 30, over 30 years. And she eventually started channeling this group of beings, I guess you could say, um, through using a spirit board. And they called themselves the Cassiopeians. And they're supposedly us from the future and i know that's such an, such an abstract you know concept of of us communicating with you know ourselves in the future um or wait did i say future it's the, it's us in the past but also the future which <laughs> which makes things even more complicated um you know it sounds like and the reason why and this sort of goes back into re the reason why she called her book the wave series because they're supposedly us in the past meeting ourselves in the future and, and they're riding this wave that's coming from, from what I understand, the middle of our galaxy and like from the galactic center. And they're riding this wave that is eventually going to meet the planet Earth. And that is the wave that is going to transform our planet from third density to fourth density. 
And, and so as they're riding this wave, heading towards Earth, they're sort of communicate, have been communicating with certain people, not just Laura Knight, um, you know, about how to navigate this, this time. And, uh, and so, you know, it's, it's hard to conceive that we could be communicating with ourselves. So, you know, the Cassiopeians, when they're in contact with Laura, it's not just one, one person or one spirit. It's the collective. And, and the reason why different people from this collective, that, that, that they call themselves the Cassiopeians, the reason why different ones can contact on the spirit board, you know, con talk to Laura on the spirit board is that they have formed what they call a social memory complex. So they, and, and the raw material explains this where eventually, you know, when you graduate into, into high, when you graduate into higher densities, you all eventually create this social memory complex and you all share all of your past and present experiences. And so, um, so, you know, when she's on the board, they'll ask who is with them and they'll, you know, the name is usually always different. So a different person will sort of be the speaker, you know, the front speaker for the, that social memory complex that, you know, is, you know, what they label the Cassiopeians. Mr. Fox, are you familiar with the, um, the uh, Hathor material or the teachings of ancient Egypt through Hathor? Uh, a little bit. Because Hathor talks about this, that we are able once we read, because I know off in our, in our, off of YouTube, you and I have conversations, had conversations about conversations about space, time and time space. Yeah. And that's hard for us to understand that as human beings, because everything's so linear. It's right. beginning, middle and end. But Hathor also speaks about as consciousness grows, fractals of your spirit everything's happening now all your past lives all your future lives it's all happening at the same time in the now right. and you're able to tap in so it kind of sounds like that's kind of the cassiopeians as well it's like aspects of ourself happening now but at a different consciousness level is that correct in saying i guess you know it's such an abstract concept that, that I, I don't even really spend much time you know thinking about that because it's so abstract and and i don't think that it <clears throat> that it matters much in a larger scheme of things, even in the context of talking about the Cassiopeians, you know, like who exactly they, they are and how they could be us coming from the future, you know, and, and even talking future past. I mean, it, it, it's, it's so, it's, it's just, it's so abstract that, that we could be, you know, traveling to meet ourselves but then at the same time, you know, it's, it, in a way, it's, it sort of makes sense that it could, since all is happening now, like you said, that, that we could be in contact with ourselves. Um, but anyway. So that, moving forward, you, you've mentioned Raw, and I know on this channel we talk a lot about the Law of One, and I know that Catherine Edwards and I want to do a show with you specifically on the Law of One. Um, and so the Cassiopeia, Raw is the entity that is channeled in the Law of One for those who are not familiar. And the Cassiopeians kind of acknowledge the Law of One being almost correct. Like that's kind of the, the template they're working off of. Is that correct in me saying that? Yeah, I mean, they... They they have confirmed that that law that you know the law of one material or the raw material is is legitimate ch channeling and and you know they feel sort of the same as I do is that you know ninety nine percent of all the channeling out there is in some way um, corrupted and you know I, I really don't pay much attention to other channelings uh, other than the law of one material and the Cassiopeian material. And that's, I know people watching don't know who you are and I've known you for a very long time now. And I will say that's true. You, and you've had your, as a person, you've had your own fair share of experiences with your own divination and you do only, you only really focus on the Cassiopeians and the law of one. And that's, that's one thing I appreciate about, about you, about you is that you have a solid 
uh, you know, in India, there's that saying many, many wives, many doctors, many teachers, certain death. So you kind of stick with this one um, kind of template of understanding and the Cassiopeians have yet to be wrong. Am I right in saying that they've yet to be wrong? Um, I mean, right, wrong, you know, you know, they, they don't do a whole lot of predictions. They really try to steer clear of that. Um, they do give us, you know, little warnings here and there, but you know, if those things don't come to pass, you know, they, they say that, that, you know, our path forward, you know, there's variations allowed, you know, they don't, they're not even sure it's all runs on probabilities in a sense, you know? And I, I, I've said that before on my channel that I really like that they use the word probability mm-hmm. uh, because most people grew up with the word prophecy. And I think that that confuses people because prophecy, people think that they can just relax in, on, in their laurels yeah. because it's prophecy. But they use probability, which makes it more serious. Like there's a probability this could happen, but there's always room for change. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, and even though they've already been through this. You know, and, and supposedly have experienced what we're going through. They still don't know exactly how it's going to play out. You know, they know what the end result is going to be, but how we get from point A to point B, there's always variations in there because you know we're going by uh, what the what the raw material talks about a lot is is uh, we're going by our our free will. You know, our God given our creator given right to, to choose our own paths as a collective and as individuals. And so that's always allowed in there. And that's why, you know, they are having to deal with, with probabilities. Yeah. It shows us how powerful we are. Well, with that being said, so you've been following the Cassiopeians now for what, 15 years, you said? Uh huh. 15 years. And you, I know you really like Laura Knight and um, have you've introduced me to Laura Knight as well as being one of the, better channelers who channels the Cassiopeians. Yeah. So let's get into this, this concept of organic portals. And I did a part one already with Nicole, whom you briefly met. And of course, Angie, who you've, you've met before, because you're a business owner in Atlanta. Angie is a big business owner in Athens. Um, and that's why I told the audience why you're, you're staying anonymous is because you are a big a business owner here in Atlanta. And this is very controversial stuff because we're talking about what 50% of the human population. Yeah. That's what the Cassiopeian says. 50% of the human population are, are organic portals. Um, And, you know, the basic, you know, premise of a organic portal is, is that they were, they were beings made human beings made to help with the transition of the planet going from second density to, to third density. And so it needed- before we, go, before we go forward with that, can you just briefly, just what's first, second, third, fourth density, just so people have an under, understanding of what you're talking about. You said second, third, fourth, or- Our first, fourth. second, like what is a first density object? Well, first density planet would be a planet that just has um, you know, minerals on it, you know, minerals and water and those minerals and water, um, you know, interact with one another, creating friction with one another existing there for, you know, that's the longest density they say is the first density that could go on for, you know, billions and billions of or billions or billions of years. And through, this uh this friction that happens on the planet eventually um you know these first density elements uh start to have you know experiences with interacting with with each other that eventually allows the planet uh to transition you know into a second density planet and a second density planet can have uh you know, the first density, which are the minerals um, and elements. And then it can also have the next level of consciousness from that, the consciousness of, of plants and animals. Um, you know, and these plants and animals don't necessarily have the kind of, uh, the kind of consciousness that we uh, exhibit, you know, the higher, the higher centers. Um, 
And so they're, they're all functioning from the three lower centers. And, you know, and that experience, that second density experience goes on for, you know, millions and millions of years. And eventually, you know, the interaction with the, with the animals and the plants and the minerals um, give them uh, a greater experience to where, you know, the planet and the beings on that planet can then graduate to the, the next level, which is third density, which is the, the shortest density. And that is called the density of choice. And so, um, you know, there's got to be third density uh, bodies introduced um, with third density brains and the potential for third density consciousness. And so that's where the organic portals come in is that they have to have sort of an intermediary, if that's the right word to use, um, sort of vehicle for eventually housing that third density um, being. And, and so third density is the density, like I said, the density of choice. And so it's the shortest density because supposedly it's the hardest on the planet um, in the sense of like, you know, the wear and tear that happens on the, the planetary sphere through, through the um, collective like third density of experience. You know, we tend to be hard on, on, on planets. So uh, third density would be human beings basically. Uh, in this, uh, from what I understand, in this galaxy, yeah, and human beings, you know, bipedal beings with, you know, two legs, two arms, fingers, you know. And that, a brain to understand, and that makes sense because of the way we abuse the planet, uh -huh. all that kind of stuff, where animals who are traditionally second density beings don't abuse the planet. Right. Maybe not as much, yeah. I don't I I'm not exactly sure about that. Maybe there are some out there that do, you know, abuse the planet in some way, but I, I'm, I'm not sure. So when this, but it's, not, it's not just how we abuse the planet. It's also, you know, we, we give off in our struggle to understand in third density, you know, we give off a lot of, uh, a lot of emotion and that emotion is absorbed within the planet and, and the planet reacts to that, you know, because we are one with our planet. And, uh, and so, so it's not just, you know, maybe the deforestation and the pollution and, and all of that, you know, it's also, you know, our emotional struggles are, you know, are feeding into the planet and that's, that can cause, you know, upheavals, you know, volcanoes and storms and, and things of that nature. You could say that those, those things happening uh, natural disasters happening to the planet is is a way of of the planet releasing, you know, the pent up emotions that we tend to push down into the into the core. Yeah, is the, is the way I understand it. And so, you know, a third density cycle, from what I understand, can't last any longer than three hundred thousand years. And after that, you know, it's basically, you know, it has to graduate into a fourth density planet. And so, and that's kind of what we're on the precipice right now on earth, correct? Is yeah. the graduation process. Now when- It's, um, it's been extended and we're entering the time where we're like, we have to do it. Yeah. So, so, and that's, you know, when the planet gets to fourth density, it either goes positive or negative, correct? Because right now we're, because we're on the, the, the density of choice, we're in the density of polarity. So um, the fourth density is where it goes positive or negative, where it has to split, correct? Correct. Yeah. And so when this planet changes into fourth density positive, it can no longer accommodate the fourth density negative service to self, no longer can it accommodate third density on its surface for a time. They say that possibly, you know, in the future, um, there could be third density life, but you know, you can't expose, you can't expose third density beings to too much fourth density frequency because right. it's, it's just not compatible. And so also, we, 
Yeah. We know right now on the, for the, and I'm going to make this clear because somebody on our part one commented that it's not sold S U L E D it's in sold E N S U L E D, but the Cassiopeians actually use the word sold, correct? S O U L E D sold a sold person. Right. Yes. A sold person, not right. an insold, but a sold person. So when we're going off the Cassie, that's the vocabulary. Or, yeah. A sold person or a person who can potentially be sold can move into that understanding, that awareness. So you have been very clear in saying that on the planet right now, just in our off of from knowing you off of line, that we are everybody on the planet right now that has a soul is a high priority soul, meaning that there are no new souls on the planet right now. Is that correct? Right. Uh huh. Um, how did the, the uh, in the raw material, they, they talked about, um, how, how did they put it uh, that there are tons of there there are many souls lined up to be reincarnated to be reincarnated on the planet right now and and since we're so close to the end of this third density cycle that they've they can only let people in that you know aside from organic portals people in that are coming very close to graduating to to fourth density, whether it be negative or positive. Correct. So it's not just when we're talking about that, because fourth density negative is also a path as well. And that's what the controllers, they right. are on. And we can get more into that when we do our law of one episode with Catherine. But I just wanted to kind of give a brief uh, template and outline to our people listening. So they kind of understand what you mean when you say organic portals were right. created. Right. We were yeah, well, we, we haven't even really gone into, into that because the, so, so it, at the end of the Earth's second density cycle, they needed they needed to have you know vessels, bodies that could eventually be sold. So there had to be this transition period where you have all the second density beings, all the animals and the plants, and then there had to be something new that came in that was going to be compatible with earth's earth's third density and so an and organic portal so people understand like if you just look at a bunch of human beings a hundred let's say you have a hundred human beings standing in a room and 50 of them are organic portals they're going to look it's not like they're they look any de- that was one question i got and organic portals can have children they look just as human as you and i do because that's the avatar it's the body that houses the soul right yeah, the, the one thing that's that's different is that, from what I understand, is they're only working from the lower chakras, and they have no no centers above the third, which is Manipura. So, and so there's really no chance, from what I understand, and we can get into this more. No chance for those organic portals to um, raise their their consciousness. Because those individuals are pretty much like, as a Cassiopeian said, are, are pretty much, you know, doomed to fail. So let's go back to the beginning, though. So these these organic portals were created to be an intermediary vehicle for for second density souls to transfer into third density. And then what happened? Yeah. What went wrong? Well, well, that's that's where things get. A little tricky because there, there was an influence on those organic portals the way that i understand it and that we were tricked as as you know because let me back up a little bit so what organic portal isn't isn't channeling in their in their being the same potential spirit energy that that sold or potentially sold beings would be channeling in um they're not sustained by the same type of spirit as as sold beings are you know they're sharing they're sharing the the sort of uh, soul consciousness or or or, or soul energy like plants and animals so 
so they can seem, you know, their brain functions just like everyone else's brain functions. It's, it's the emotional center. At the end of the day, it's the emotional center that isn't necessarily there because that's really the Cassiopeians say that our, our, it's our emotional center that gives us the ability to, to grow and progress along the densities. And so they're lacking that emotional center. So all and, they're really living in is the ego, which is the false sense of self. They can't find their own deeper sense of self that goes beyond the experience of the body. Because they, they meet a wall. When they make it up, when they move up the energy centers, all of a sudden it just stops. There's no potential of, the, of, of that consciousness moving up. So they have no true empathy, no true compassion. Any emotions right. they feel come uh -huh. straight through the degradation of the ego. Right. So, but, okay. So what I was going to explain as, as well is that, you know, at the beginning, the, the, the Cassiopeians call these the, the pre-Adamic humans. And... Yeah, the Cassiopeians talk about how we as, as souls, complete souls with all its potential, were, were tricked into entering these, these intermediary organic portal bodies. And that's how we got sort of hijacked in a way. You know, because the conditions on planet Earth, according to both Ra from the Law of One and Cassiopeians, is that this is extremely rare that we would find ourselves in such chaos and self, such difficulty in making it through our third density cycle. And so they're saying that you have to travel all the way back to... Um, the, to pre-Adamic times to understand how this all happened. And they, and they say, you know, it's basically represented within uh, the whole Adam and Eve story and that, you know, these uh, service to self, higher density beings. Which are of, the negative. Yeah, which are the negative sort of called us over in a sense, the sold beings over said, Hey, you know, we, we've got something we want to show you. And, they give them a glimpse of of life on Earth in these in these uh, organic portal bodies, and and they say, "Wouldn't you like to come and experience this for yourself?" And as soon as they were able to capture one, I think that it, what it sounds like is they were ap able to capture like like a whole uh, social memory complex of of sold beings. And that started this, that sort of is what kicked off and how they were sort of high, able to hijack our third density experience is that. So we've been doing this tango through the organic portals with the negative side for thousands and thousands of years. Well, for when it sounds like, you know, around uh, maybe 300,000 years, I don't know, may, maybe, maybe more. And, so and that's the, well, and that's why I kind of want, I was kind of talking about in part one from what we've spoken about. It's like now we're in a situation where the organic portals, the, the people who are organic portals, which is 50% of the human population, yeah. they're not come, cut from the same cloth that we are. Um, they are now totally controlled, whether they know it or not, they are totally controlled by negative higher. No, they could be, they could be used. So you can't say that they're all being necessarily controlled because they don't need to control all of them. They only need to control the ones that are beneficial to, to them. So that, you know, um, they, they can in a way sort of, I guess, possess and manipulate the, them when they need to, when they need to go on an attack, maybe to stop a soul being from progressing. Um, so you can't say they're all necessarily possessed. I'm not saying possessed, but just kind of influencer. So let's talk about that because that's something I think, you know, and you've talked to me a lot about this. And I think a lot of sold beings, people who have like big hearts, tender hearts, um, we, we're, we're under this idea that we have to give, 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 give to help someone almost like a sacrificial 
sacrifice, which law of one says is a negative polarity, right? To be a martyr is negative. Uh -huh. Yeah. So when these, let's go back to the dynamics between um, a soul. So right now we find ourselves in 2023 in this incredible predicament that we're in. Yeah. Even though the probability of planet Earth going fourth density positive, it's still just a, a probability. No, it's not. That's it. That's definitely going to happen. But the whether, negative whether, still, whether, we're, whether we're ready for it or not, it's it, we're we're moving into our planet changing into fourth density positive. So we, we did something right as humans. <laughs> I mean, it's not. It's nothing right or wrong. It's just the planet. It, it's it's like you know the raw material. Say it's it it's like a clock you know it could be in a way it could be that that part can be predicted you know but at the same time our third density has been extended because you know they wanted to give us a little bit more of a chance to increase the amount of people that can be transitioned the raw material calls it harvested yeah um, I've used. <laughs> I've used <laughs> that, that sounds that sounds really uh, a little sort of scary. That we're that sounds like a Stephen King novel. Um, I've used. Uh, I always laugh why. when I say that's the word they use is harvesting, but it's more like graduating. Like you're ready to graduate. Uh -huh. Now, with that being said, though, so we know that the 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 negative side to to what to graduate service itself, you have to be like ninety nine percent pretty uh, much uh, diabolical. It's correct. Ninety nine percent. I think it's like uh, ninety. 92 or 96 percent so not really not high percentage of just uh -huh. being diabolical right. but for a positive it's only like 51 percent correct correct yeah 51 percent and it has nothing they say it's a good thing that people understand this is that um third density is not the density of what they call not the density of knowing and so it's not that you have to gather any information or to necessarily study anything to be able to graduate. It all goes by, it all goes by frequency. And, you know, you're not given a test at the end, you know, it's just your actions have to, have to, um, be, Mirror that of a positive, an empathetic person. Right. Can yeah. we talk? So you have to. So you have to have made a choice, and whether it be a conscious choice or a, a not a conscious choice, you know, you don't have to constantly tell yourself that you want to be service to others to be able to graduate positive, but your actions have to have to speak of that. And so, you know, fifty-one percent of your actions would have to be in service to others, but you know, not necessarily like working in a soup kitchen. No, I mean, but you just, you, you have the essence of empathy. You have the e essence of wanting to, to do good by people. You're not looking to screw people over. You're not a narcissist. You're not, you're not, you're not going around. You're, you're always thinking about how other people are feeling. So I think that's kind of, and I wanted to, cause I, I had somebody ask that yesterday on the part one um, recording about, uh, you know, so many people in this quote unquote truth or community they know all this intel but they might not graduate positive and i thought about that overnight and i realized you know with the missing books of the bible they talk about edo and gnosis edo is just intellect knowing it's just like knowing you know like it's you it's it's like um i think you said it this morning a smart dog is easy to train it's like edo is the educational system and so knowing who the alliance is knowing about mr t knowing about what's going on that's not the awakening that's just information that's just knowledge the awakening is the spiritual understanding of who you are as a as a person and that's what pushes you forward um i know you know that i'm a huge fan of, of marnie alton a bar teacher and she um according to her social media hates mr t She's totally convinced he's the bad guy. But when I hear her teaching, she's very much aware spiritually of herself. And the things that she says in her classes, you can tell she's, she's really on the ball spiritually. And so I've been saying, like, it doesn't really matter what people know. My friend Shanti from Aquarius Rising Africa always says, that's just the drama of it all. That's not really the important thing. The important thing is you as a, as a human being, as a souled person, your vibration within yourself understanding what that positive density is which has absolutely fuck all to do 
with the intellect. If, does that make sense? Yeah, well, let's get let's get into actually me reading one of uh, the Cassiopeian's answer to one of Laura's questions okay. um, sort of pertaining to this. And so the question that she's go going on and saying, you know, there was a discussion the other day and it made me curious. It seems that some people simply do not have the capacity to understand certain concepts. Is this a function of vibrational frequency? Cassiopeian's answer in this way. That is not quite hitting at the subject matter in the way in which you desire to answer the question. In other words, it is a parallel understanding pattern. It is not vibrational, vibrational frequency that determines ability to conceive any particular notion. Vibrational frequency involves the groove or pattern that one has chosen in general terms. But to give you an example, there are those who are very low as you would measure vibrational frequency, who are able to conceive of extremely complicated issues and have also discovered extremely precise, complicated and intricate answers to very complex notions and problems from your standpoint in the illusion. But the, fre the frequency vibrational level has more to do with the emotional path that leads either to service to self at its greatest possible expression or service to others at its greatest possible expression, not with intellectual capacity. So it is possible for a completely service to self individual at any density level to be completely cognizant of all existence, just as it is possible for a completely service to other individual to be completely cognizant of all existence. It has nothing to do with vibrational frequency because that is the emotional pathway. Think of it, if you will, in your lifetime, have you ever met either A, an individual that you did not perceive to be particularly intellectually developed, who was nevertheless of a kind and loving and giving nature, or B, an individual whom you perceive to have great intellectual capacity, who was nevertheless extremely selfish and non-giving and not generous and not concerned about anyone's well-being but their own? So basically, end of the day, you cannot judge somebody's harvesting by what they know. Exactly. Right. And, it's, and all about, it's all about the emotional center. And, and, that I think someone that, and, that's, and that's what scares me about the truther community is because there's so many people who are very vigilante. They're like bloodthirsty, you know, and, and that does not ring positive to me that they're trying to destroy all these things and. You know, that does not. So I, I I really wanted to focus on that because that this is a spiritual awakening. It doesn't matter. The story doesn't matter, you know, and there are people and you, it's I like how they say that I had somebody ask Mr. Fox about um, when we were describing like personality traits of uh, organic portal. And this person um, said it sounds a lot like Asperger's. And I, I want to make that clear that even like autism, Asperger's, even all these things don't really determine anything. It's just. You, it's, it's kind of like the can we ex expand upon that greater about like you know if there's an autistic person that doesn't determine whether they're an organic portal or not correct correct um actually give me just a second please. let me let me look at something because um there was some other stuff that i wanted to read some direct channeling stuff that we can we can talk about um and they go on to sort of, you know, they're, they're wondering how you can figure out um, how you can tell if someone is an organic portal. Um, well, while you're looking for that, I'll remind everybody, we spoke about this yesterday, um, the part one, which if you missed part one, I will put that down in the description box below. But the more you ascend, the more you vibrationally rate, raise your, your frequency, um, the more organic portals are going to be coming to you. They're yeah. going to come to you. Yeah. We're gonna, I was going to get to that. All right, cool. <laughs> I'll <laughs> hand it over uh, to you. Well, why don't, I go, why don't I go through and start with um, this, start with this um, Malviv guy, because they talk about, they talk about, um, they go through this whole question answer thing sort of drilling down on on you know 
what exactly an organic portal is and where they came from. And they're, they're bouncing it off the Cassiopeians through this work that they read from this guy, Moraviv. It's a Russian guy who was connected with um, Gujarat, Opinsky, I think that's how you pronounce his name, and, and um, Blavatsky. And um, you can read his, his short uh, sort of bio, and he's just, he's got some pretty um, profound sort of experience and in, in study and, and just uh, how he lived his life. Anyway, he, he had uh, written some books, and in one of his books, he was sort of explaining in his own way, um, using, I think, some Buddhist concepts, you know, and sort of explaining what an organic portal was without necessarily labeling them as organic portals. And so Laura Knight is asking Cassiopeian some questions about his work and uh, if they found that, you know, they were basically talking about the same thing. So, so let me read some of these questions and answers, and then we can stop and discuss those. Okay, so the question is, Morvif says the pre-Adamic humans do not have higher centers, nor the possibility of developing them in this cycle, which we assume to be the grand cycle you previously described, the length of which is around 300,000 years. Is this an accurate representation of pre-Adamic beings? And the Cassiopeians say, Yes, they are organic portals between levels of density. So this is when they first start to actually really try to drill down into, you know, what it means to be an organic portal. So the next question is, based on what Morvif said, it seems to be so that any efforts to try to raise the consciousness of such, such individuals is doomed to fail. And the Cassiopeians say, pretty much, most of them are very efficient machines. The ones that you have identified as sociopaths are failures. The best ones cannot be discerned except by long and careful observation. And so they sort of give us a warning not to jump at trying to, you know, label someone as, as an organic portal. Um, and, you know, there was another quote in here where they where they were asked a question. They say, they, they give a warning. They say, now do not start labeling without due consideration. Remember that very often the individual who displays contradictory behavior may be a sold being in struggle. So, you know, the, the point here is that trying to hunt down organic portals, you know, it's just... Like protecting yourself. Cassiopeians say, knowledge protects. And so it's a good idea that you know that these types of beings exist in our world. And that just because half of the population on the planet right now are organic portals and the other half sold or potentially sold beings doesn't necessarily mean that we have that much access to them as a soul being. So if you're a soul being, it's not gonna that it's not gonna be that half of the people that you interact with on a daily basis are going to be organic portals because organic portals, and as I'll get into, sort of uh, gravitate around one another. So we're going to, you know, people that are soul beings are more likely going to act and interact mostly with other soul beings, at least in their close, you know, family and friends group. So let me, let me also, let me get back to these question answers. So the other question that they had, so we have recently been working with some material from Boris Morvif. More, more we can see many relationships between that work. And so many of the clues and hints scattered throughout the Cassiopeian trend transmissions. We seem to be, what seems to be important is his information about the centers, three lower, three higher that are not seated in the body. Then he talks about the difference between A influences and B influences and the necessity 
of a simulation of B influences in order to fuse the magnetic center, which then enables the soul or higher centers to seat in the body. Is this information from more beef about these matters fairly accurate? And as Europeans say, not just fairly, it has been preserved from the time of the fall. And then they go on to ask another question. Morviv states clearly that this teaching is a thin thread of an oral tradition that the monks themselves in various locations admit that it has not only been put into writing, but has not ever even been gathered together in a single place. This is, of course, problematical, but it seems that Morviv has made a sincere effort to present the material of the tradition itself. So they're just, what that's saying is that these type of beings have been, other, other cultures, other religions, other, you know, spiritual practices or, or um, lineages have all been aware that there were soulless beings. Yeah, that's what in part one, if you guys go back and watch part one, Nicole found that in a lot of the Greek and Sumerian texts that this was, it's like we've gotten stupider. Like our ancestors knew that this existed, that this phenomenon existed. Um, did, the, did the Cassiopeians explain why we forgot this information? Like where did this information go? Uh, not necessarily, no, but there's another, there's another um, area where they're talking about um, Morviv's description of, of the organic portals. And they say that Morviv says that there are two kinds of humans. He calls the pre-Adamic and Adamic. This, the idea is that pre-Adamic human types basically have no soul, nor any possibility of growing one. This is a very, this is very, this is pretty shocking, a pretty shocking idea. But there have been recent scholarly discussions in this matter based on what seems to be clinical evidence that indeed there are human beings who are just mechanical and have no inner or higher self at all. And the Cassiopeians say, indeed, though, again, there is a, bi a biblical gloss to it. And so, you know, they're trying to steer clear of uh, any... I guess maybe it's just a description. He was, they were quote, they were saying had this biblical gloss to it. You know, I don't think that they necessarily think, they don't necessarily say that they're, they're Adamic or pre Adamic. Well, I mean, so can we talk about, let's, let's go back to like us now in this reality that we're living in and, and how we interact with the organic portals. Um, I know I said this in part one, that the higher you ascend, the more organic portals you're going to attract, correct? Right. Yeah. So can we talk a little bit about that? Yeah, let me happening? Yeah, let's let me uh read a an answer from the Cassiopeians that may shine some light on that. Because I was saying that, you know, that the population is evenly distributed 50-50 or organic portals and sold or potentially sold beans. And so say if you consider the population is equally distributed, then you will understand that in, in an ordinary sold person's life, that person will encounter half as many organic portals as sold individuals. But when someone is in the process of growing and strengthening the soul, the control system, will seek to insert even more units, organic portals, into that person's life. Now think of all the people you have ever met, and particularly those with whom you have been or are intimate. Which half of this number would you designate as being organic portals? And they say, hard to tell, yeah? Not for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, as you as you start to, you know, grow spiritually and grow in knowledge of these things that aren't frequently talked about, 
they definitely send their units in, their organic portal units, the control system does, to try to bump you off course or to head, you know, to send you off into useless, uh, useless directions. Right. And they, then they ask, is this the original meaning of the pollution of the bloodline that the Bible talks about? And the Cassiopeians say yes. Interesting. So, you know, it's the, it's the people that you're most intimate with that you really have to keep an eye out for. And it takes close, close, long-standing observation to figure out if someone is an organic portal. So, and, you know, in that case, it's not going to help pointing fingers and calling them an organic portal. What's going to help is to, you know, remove that person from your life and create boundaries around that, you know, interaction with that person. Because at the end of the day, you know, just because you're calling someone an organic portal isn't going to do them or yourself any good, other than just recognizing that that person is who they are, an organic portal, and then... You know, and they haven't been sent to you to love you. They've been sent to you to derail you. Right. And that, you know, they, you're not going to help them grow a soul because they don't have that possibility. And that's where this gets a little controversial. Yeah. We talked about there. that, that you got, you've got to let them go because you can't, you cannot, they don't have enough self-awareness to have a soul. And right. that's their own journey to be on. Like you can't try to do that for them. It right. just drains, drains you of your energy. Exactly. And actually the Cassiopeians talk about that. So they go into uh, this question answer session with the Cassiopeians that sort of get into um, how they, how they um, can sort of wreak havoc, havoc on your life in a sense. And so, I'm also assuming, Mr. Fox, you'll send me a link uh, to this board so people can look at it for themselves. Well, yeah, but Laura Knight recommends on the forum that before you go in and start reading the transcripts, you should read her book series, which I think that you can even get online for free and download it. Okay, well, I'll make sure so I can read, read you know, at least read the first couple books of the wave series to understand where she's coming from, where they're coming from. Cause they just get right down to business, right? Knowing the, no, yeah. Knowing the backstory. There's and, no introduction. Uh, there's no, or you could just find yourself a really good friend in your life to explain it to you. <laughs> you explain it to me. Okay. So let's get into some of this question answer stuff and maybe that'll start the next sort of topic is they were going into the bloodline thing, which I thought was really interesting. So the remember the pollution of the bloodline and they say, what does having a soul or not having a soul have to do with bloodline? And they say genetics marry with soul if present. And then they ask, do organic portals go to fifth density when they die? And they say only temporary until the second death. And they say, what is the origin of these organic portal human types in the scheme of creation? Where do they come from? And that's where they say they were originally part of the bridge between second density and third density. And they asked, would you say, you said, before, they, they, they're quoting, they're saying, you said before the organic portals were originally intended as a bridge between second and third densities and that they were used. Is Morvif right about the potential for organic portals to advance being dependent upon soul beings advancement to service to other at the end of this cycle. And the Cassiopeians say, not exactly. A soul imp imprint can grow independent of the cycle. However, it is more likely for a soul to grow when interacting with fourth density service to other Ser service to self tends to drain energy for its own use. So, so it's possible for an organic portal to eventually evolve itself by being enveloped by service to others, correct? Right, but that a third density being would not have what it takes to help that organic portal grow, that it would take 
a fourth density service to other or above to affect them. So if you are on this earth right now, don't even try. Exactly. Don't even waste your time. Right, because it, it they end up just feeding off of you. All right, so let's actually talk about the day-to-day -day life interacting with organic portals, Mr. Fox. What do the Cassiopeians say about that? Well, they say you're, you're going to encounter half as many um, organic portals, like a sold person is only going to encounter half as many as, as they could potentially encounter. So you're saying that 50-50, 50, 50, 50 organic portal, 50%, sold beings but that a sold being is only going to encounter half as many as that and in the cassiopeians so, so there's a, there was some, some confusion there like okay well if if it's 50 50 then why would we only you know be encountering 50 percent of the 50 percent you understand what i'm saying and so the Cassiopeians yeah. say it means that soul it means that souls run in families for the most part Thus, a sold, and we mean potentially sold individual, is likely to encounter and interact more with other sold humans. However, when awakening, they may encounter even more organic portals than the 50%. So, in your normal everyday life, of someone who isn't like on the fast track to enlightenment, <laughs> uh, that they would not. They wouldn't be engaging with many organic portals but if you're going to amp things up and do things like practice yoga and study ancient texts and look into things like the cassiopeian material those, literally everything I, i've done and you have done exactly so you <laughs> you attract more organic portals than than you would normally encounter in, you know, just leading an everyday banal existence. And Mr. Yeah. Fox, you know me out, you know me personally, I've attracted a lot of organic portals, haven't I? Yeah. Uh -huh. So yeah. have you. Yeah. So they go on the question, the Cassiopeians, so they say, so they tend to run in families, but families can, can have aberrations. That is a family that's mostly organic portals could have an occasional sold humans, sold human, which they don't know what to do with. And in the same way, a family of mostly sold people could have an occasional organic portal or a line of them pops up in the family every now and then. But for the most part, people with souls marry people with souls unless there is some danger of them awakening, in which case there's a special situation where fourth density service to self insert organic portals in their lives. But I would say that in a general sense. Is that what happened to you? Yeah. And it, Is that what happened to me? Most likely. Yeah. Because I know uh, your past and we got in, someone got inserted into our romantic lives. Yeah. And then they, then they also, that can screw up a bloodline because if you have children with them you're you're sort of in a way breeding outside of a sold group so your family could have consist of you know 99 percent or 100 percent sold beings but then you get into an intimate relationship with an organic portal you have children and so then that disrupts the bloodline so when the Bible or other texts talk about bloodlines, I don't think they're always referring to uh, bloodlines as in RH negative, RH positive, or bloodlines leading back from Jesus or whatever. It's talking about the potential of having an insertion in your blood in a sold group's bloodline of an organic portal. And FYI, you guys, Mr. Fox is also RH negative, just like me. <laughs> just FYI. Um, so I got that question a lot in the first video. Can uh, a sold person marry and procreate with an, uh, with an organic por portal? You're saying yes. So the offspring, the children of an organic portal and a sold, is it just like a 50-50 toss up of whether they're going to be organic portaled or sold? Oh, I don't know about that. They don't, they don't talk about 
that that I that I've seen. But if you have two sold parents, more than likely it's going to be a sold child. More than likely, yes. But there can be some anomalies in there, you know. I mean, that would probably be a pretty gnarly soul con okay let's talk about soul contracts in dharmas it's only for sold people correct to have like a soul contract or like a higher self right yeah so organic portals don't have soul contracts right unless they have a soul contract with uh the fourth density service to self beings you know because you know I, they, they've got to be able to have some free will there you know, and they, their free will could have been exercised before they even came into their organic portal bodies and made an agreement with these fourth density service to self that they could be controlled. I don't know how that works. So potentially, I'm just asking this hypothetically. So if you have a bunch of higher density sold beings who came down for this timeline and we can get more into like wanderers when we do our law of one episode with Catherine edwards but if if let's say you and i had a soul contract with source to do all these things on this planet at this time in these bodies is it potential is it hypothetically could an organic portal then make a soul contract with a negative being to derail us to try to derail us and would we have to be involved in that agreement or no no uh -uh. i don't think so i, I don't and i don't think that you know, the more i think about it I, I don't think that there was any soul contracts with these with these negative fourth density service to self being they just use them they can just, they, they can just use them like remote control cars, they just step exactly. in and go whoop and uh -huh. put them in our way. So I right. guess it's kind of and kind of comically, it's like the more organic portals come your way, I guess you know you're over the target. Uh huh, for sure. And there, you know, there was something else I wanted to um, read about. So about um, about being able to spot organic portals. Okay, so let's talk about that. Ask the question. I, I would. Uh, Laura says. I would say that the chief thing you were saying is that the, the really good ones, the really good organic portals, you could never tell except for long observation. The one key we discovered from studying psychopaths with that was that their actions do not match their words. But what if that is a symptom of just being weak and having no will? And the Cassiopeians answer, do you ever hurt for another? And they say, I think... They are talking about empathy. These soulless humans simply don't care what happens to another person. If the other person is in pain or misery. They don't know how to care. And the Cassiopeians say the only pain they experience is withdrawal of food for comfort or what they want. They are also masters of twisting perception of others so as to seem to be empathetic. But in general, such actions are simply to retain control. So they like to mimic us. They have no emotional center. And so they'll borrow your emotional center so they can mimic you. So they'll closely observe you. So then they can, they can borrow from you. They can, they can also borrow what you convey to them as your experience of growing spiritually and they can try to mimic that they they know deep down that they can't they can't gain any benefit from certain you know spiritual practices that that soul beings can benefit from but they can listen to your experiences as a soul being and what you've gone through and your struggles with you know trying to gain self-knowledge and then they can try to mimic that. And so you have to be careful that people aren't feeding off you in that way. You know, that they're, they're also, you know, watching them closely to make sure that, you know, are they doing the work? So um, it's, and I, and I know what you're talking about because it's happened to me um, where people will mimic me but i'm trying to explain the difference so like a sold being can take on a teacher or listen intently 
to a person explain their experiences through their own development. They can use the lessons the person taught them, but still have their own experience. Whereas an organic portal will simply just act it out and regurgitate it. Exactly. Yeah. So I want to make that clear. Like if you're going to like, for the people watching, if you're going to a Reiki teacher or yoga teacher or whatever it is, and you're listening to what your teacher is saying and you're taking in their experiences and digesting it and applying it to your own experience, that does not make you an organic portal. Organic portals are literally just actors mimicking. Yeah. And eventually the mask slips some, uh, sometimes. I think that's funny. They're saying that like psychopaths are dumb organic portals. Yeah, uh, failed organic portals. Because organic portal at its optimum can blend in to society. You they know, and they're sort of like, and they're, and they're in a way, they're sort of like sleepers. They're just going about life in their mechanical way and waiting for a higher density service to self being to need them and, and, sort of send so when, them, and sort of send them on a mission but it's not that they are cognizant of that mission i was they about to say organic portal. portals don't know they're organic porters portals correct correct yeah so when they, they feel like so with an org organic portal an organic portal can genuinely think they're hearing from God and being motivated by God, but it's not. It's a fourth density negative being. Exactly. Right. And there have been there have been organic portals that have have been respected, quote unquote, respected channelers that the Cassiopeians have pointed out and said that, oh no, this, you know, this is basically an organic portal that is being sort of downloaded with wrong information through higher density service to self beings but, spoke about but that. it seems like but it seems like to some that it's it's a positive message but it's just positive enough with enough twist to it to just confuse people and lead, and, this, to a, and lead to a cul-de-sac, you know, a dead end. And this is kind of what you were saying at the beginning, that you, you only listen to, like, certain divinations. And I said this on our part one, like, you should not be taking – you should always take divination with a grain of salt because who – you don't know who these people are actually channeling. Correct? Correct. I mean, that's why – it and is. that's what's scary in the truth of the world is that people are taking these channelers so seriously and it's terrifying. Uh -huh. um, I got this question. What do you think, Mr. Fox? Are there organic portals in the truth or community? I mean, for 50% organic portals and 50% sold people. So yeah, of course, there's going to be organic portals in the, <clears throat> in the truth or community. Um, this is why everybody just needs to do their own work on their own spiritual journey because it's not about the intel it's about the inner journey Questions? Right. and yeah be looking out for mr fox he will be coming on with Catherine edwards and me to talk about the law of one um please share this video uh, as you guys know i struggle with shadow banning on my channel so i'd appreciate it if you would share this video so that your fellow sold beings <laughs> um have a better shot <laughs> of, of protecting themselves thank you so mis much mr fox for coming on i truly appreciate it you're welcome thanks for having me talk to you soon bye everybody